Welcome to For the Love of Books, Bees Books Edition, a podcast by North Lancashire Libraries. Hi, this is Barry. And this is Jenny, and we're here to talk about Bees Books. So this time around, the theme that we gave us was High Hopes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and I was actually really excited to hear about this, because usually when, you know, Bees theme comes up, I'm... Either I'm struggling to think of a book and I have to go away and do research to mm-hmm. think of what book I'm going to suggest. Or I have the perfect book in mind already and I'm really excited to talk about it. This time around, I am really excited to talk about this book, but in a very different direction. Oh. <laughs> it comes from like just complete plot twist. Oh. Yeah, so uh, yes. So what, what about you, Jenny? What book are you going to be talking so about? So the book I'm doing is a bit of a cheat because I'm going to talk about... <laughs> A book we've talked about before. So in the last couple of episodes ago, you recommended mm. Gideon the Ninth. Mm-hmm. I devoured it in no time at all. Oh. I had extremely high hopes after what you uh-huh. said and totally matched up, if not more, to oh, your, to your hope. So I want to talk a wee bit about that. I have also just started the second in the series. <gasps> I'm halfway through it. <laughs> My hopes were even higher for this one and I have not been disappointed. So I wanted to talk to you about That's that. That's incredible. I'm... So excited to hear you say that because <laughs> I requested the second book and then I went away for like other stuff and I got an email saying your book's here but I was like, oh no, but I can't collect <laughs> it and what if they send it back because I'm not there. But you very kindly saved it for I me did. and we can share the excitement. Yes. That's amazing. I'm really excited. So I'm glad yeah, your high hopes were matched. So the book that I am going to not recommend the book that I'm going to match to this theme is called The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Oh, I don't know this book. This, uh, so it's a really, like I've heard a lot about this book. It's fantasy. Mm-hmm. And I've heard so many good things about this book from like lots of different contexts. So like I, I'm on Goodreads a lot, which is this book recommendation and categorizing website. Mm-hmm. It's like four point whatever stars there. A lot of people, like Neil Gaiman, for example, who, you know, like, Uh I would trust as an authority on, like, books that I would like. He loves this book. Rick Riordan, the Percy Jackson guy, Mm -hmm. he loves this book. Like, there's a lot of people whose work I like who've spoken really highly about this book. So I had such high hopes for this book because it's, like, kind of like a canonical text almost in contemporary fantasy. Mm -hmm. So I read this book and Jenny... (laughs) <laughs> I I was so angry. I wish you could see her face I right was, now. <laughs> like it triggers me. Like I don't use the word trigger lightly. But even now I feel my blood pressure oh, rise. No. Like, <laughs> like when I read this book, I, I, like, I kept giving it a chance because now I've like reached that age and stage in life where I have so many good books that Absolutely. if it's not working for me, I just like drop it. Mm-hmm. Earlier I used to feel really guilty. But this, because, you know, so many voices I trust, and some people that I knew as well, who really loved this book, and I was like, no, they can't be this mistaken. Like, even in the beginning, I was like, I don't know that, you know, but maybe it's going to subvert it, and it did not subvert it, and it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. And as soon as I finished this, I ranted so angrily to my partner, Jack, <laughs> that he uses this now. It's like a joke, running joke. <laughs> like if he wants to annoy me, he'll bring this up or he'll be like, oh, at least it's not like the name of the wind. <laughs> the other day I was sort of doing shelf duty or at the library and I came across this and I had to take a picture and send it to him. And I was like, should I like hide it so that no, <laughs> nobody else finds it? But again, like I feel like I'm the lone dissenting voice because... It's a beloved book. So I'm going to stop ranting for a bit. I'm going to mm-hmm. have some more ranting okay. in me. I'd like to hear your nice thoughts about Gideon. So you said it was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought, you know, from the cover, um, not fancying the cover at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I'm going to give it a go because I trust you. Um, and I absolutely devoured it. I loved it. I loved it. I had no idea what was going on at all. Right? But it was like getting on a roller coaster where you don't know what the roller coaster is going to do. So you don't know if it's going to be a really tall one or if it's going to go through a tunnel or anything like that. But you're on it and you love it and you don't care. And when you get to the end, you think, I could have done that again. Uh-huh. Um, it was that kind of a story. Um, there is a bit right at the end where I went, uh-huh. um, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> is it fine? No, it's not fine. Pan, I it's not fine. honestly, the bit at the end... I saw it coming a little bit, even though I recommended this book before I didn't see that coming. <laughs> because of 
some things that had happened in the middle uh, like in the middle not in the beginning in the beginning you have no idea what's going no on idea. but like this specific information was given and it's like what's that film thing chekhov's gun you mm-hmm. know if you show a gun then by the end of the film that gun has to go off so like yeah. there needs to be a, so i felt like this information that was like we found out mm-hmm. and gideon found out to, towards the middle i was like they wouldn't give this information absolutely if yeah. that information wasn't being used mm-hmm. and so i sort of you know as like oh this is yeah yeah no i absolutely i i had such high hopes for it oh, um, and so i was happy. not disappointed um i loved that you were kind of taken along you didn't know some things you didn't mm-hmm. know other things you kind of guessed some things as well yeah. you kind of thought right okay can see that as you say that's yeah. coming um but i think still at the end i was like i don't know what i just read no. i have no idea but yeah. i loved it um i loved the characters and um, i did love gideon Me too. um and i, I loved her um the person that she was cavalier for. Harrow? Yes, Harrow. Uh-huh. Harrow Hark. Yeah. Although the whole book I called her Harrow Hawk. Um, <laughs> I don't think know she would, I think like yeah. that, she would totally rock that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved their interaction as well and their interaction with everybody else. And it was complicated, right? Like yeah. it wasn't, they're not easy friendships or easy relationships. They're all a bit on edge mm-hmm. and uncertain and like, toxic at times and like really like nobody's there's no uncomplicated relationship no, at exactly. all throughout exactly. and like like you said it's it's such a different kind of book for me mm-hmm. i mean i don't know maybe there are a lot of books out there like <laughs> this i haven't come across them and it's just like you said the roller coaster th- i think metaphor is perfect because i I had no idea what was happening even in the end I was like I'm not sure I know what ha- like I know a little bit more but the way that it set up the next book in the wider world I was like I have no idea what's going to happen <laughs> but I love it I love not knowing No exactly and I think it, it wouldn't work with a lot of things yeah. but it works very well with this yeah. um I just I absolutely absolutely loved it but I'm going to talk a little bit about the second yes, book Yes please um, do if you don't mind yeah. um, because I'm halfway through it mm-hmm. and already I'm like above and beyond what I was hoping Amazing. it would be. You have no idea what happens in the second book either. No, it's great. basically that you've just got on and you've thought you've got on the same roller coaster. Yeah. No, <laughs> you've not. You've got onto a different roller coaster. It's doing a lot of different things. Right. Um, there's a lot of reference back to the first book, but not to spoil it, it's not quite the same. Ah. Um, so and is it like you're what you thought happened wasn't actually ah uh-huh, yes oh. and it's like i have why why um this the second one's also s- slightly differently written in that it's not just from one point of view right um and some of it's written as if it's somebody telling the character what happened mm. rather than them living through it um, it's quite mysterious, like more and you don't know no, who it is. You don't, and it's more mysterious than than the first one. There's more, which is to, quite uh, yeah, <laughs> quite a claim because the first one was all mystery. Exactly, um, and they are more out in space rather than being on a planet, which yeah. they were before. But again, we are not really that kind of reader. No, you don't really notice it. Um, it's more what's happening inside than what's happening outside. Yeah. Um, but there's a few new characters. Um, one of them is quite grumpy, and I, I like grumpy characters. Me I do. Too. Um, and she's very cool. Um, but yeah, already as I say, I'm halfway through, and it's way beyond my hopes. And there's still half a book to go. Um, so there's a third book as well in this series, which I'm not sure we have yet. But we need to because at least even if nobody else reads the <laughs> series, the, the two of us need to know what I happens. I have asked. Um, oh, uh, excellent. And the good thing is that she has said it's a trilogy. Okay. I love a trilogy. I, I like Game of Thrones, for example, where there's 27 plus books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I like a trilogy because you know that that's it. Yeah. If there's another trilogy with the same characters, yeah. it's a different story. So you know that you're finished. Yeah. Um, I like like Lord of the Rings is a three yeah. book thing. You know, Harry Potter was a, a six book, but you kind of knew that that was, that was it. Right. Um, but a trilogy, I think, is just right. So, yes. 
please, please, please. So what you love to hear and maybe other people who we've convinced to read this book, mm -hmm. there's a short story as well Ooh. featuring two of the characters in Gideon the Nine mm -hmm. set before. Okay. Um, and it's just like this random sort of glimpse into their life. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, they're trying to figure out what's going on and it's free it's uh, available online on tor.com so I, I wish I'd pre prepared the name of the story <laughs> but if you literally google times in year <laughs> yeah, thank you uh, Gideon the Nine short story you'll come across it and that short story is much the same mm -hmm. in that that was my first encounter with it again no idea what's going on no idea who these people are no idea of the world or necromancy or whatever I'm along for the ride and it's a much shorter ride because it's a short story. Mm -hmm. But by the end, I was like, this was actually a great way to introduce me to this mm -hmm. world. Because for me, it was through word of mouth online mostly. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it like if you're okay with that short story, I feel like if people don't want to commit to mm -hmm. a book, yeah. uh, which is quite like a fat book, I mean, ish, fatish. Fatish. Uh, <laughs> and you know, if you read that and you're okay with like not knowing what's going on, but being along for the thrill of the ride, then you would, I think, really like. So yeah. for you, once you finish the mm -hmm. second book as well, you can go back to that because it's set before, so there are no spoilers. Oh, that's really. good. That's good. That's exciting. Yes. But I need to know more about your book. Right. I need to know what it's about. Okay. Because you basically slated it, but you've not told us what it's that's about. So, okay. So <laughs> I would la like, I don't even know so much now. I don't remember. So, okay. So the uh, main character is Kuete. I think that's how his name is pronounced. K B O T H E. So I have a really bad habit of renaming characters. Uh -huh. I don't like that name. No. So throughout the book, he would be called Keanu. Oh, great! So Keanu, mm -hmm. right? So we—it's basically we're seeing him from the beginning, pre-magic, mm -hmm. to how he develops his skills and sort of finds out and goes to a school and uh, like develops his magic. Like he comes from this really impoverished, deprived sort of background i've read it um not that long ago but like i think about a couple of years probably but all i remembered about how annoying i found him <laughs> so there's this um criticism with fan fiction online that uh it's called mary sue mm -hmm. so it's basically like uh, a lot of teenage girls are criticized for this that they basically insert a really perfect idealized version of themselves into something like Harry Potter or Twilight, like a world they love. They'll make up a new character who's basically them mm -hmm. and she'll be perfect. Like everyone will fall in love with her. She'll be good at everything. She'll, you know, like that's the critique. Like there's no real conflict. Like she suddenly appears and all the protagonists want to be friends with her. She's so good at everything she does. Like in Harry Potter, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. She's like the star Gryffindor. She'll become the prefect yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Help Harry kill Voldemort or whatever. <laughs> um, in this case, this is Keanu. Oh. He's the Gary Stu of uh, okay. the book. And it's like, you know, he goes to the school like without anything. He's just perfect at everything he does. There's this woman that he's in love with and like late throughout. And like this like the woman may as well be as like you know feminist critics call it a lamppost mm -hmm. like she she has the personality of a lamppost if you replaced her with the lamppost and Keanu was <laughs> in love with her that would be fine like it's I, I think for me what annoyed me is that I couldn't believe this was the kind of book that was being recommended to me now mm -hmm. when there's other books where this man is not the center of the universe in a mm -hmm. fantasy world like even like Lord of the Rings and things, sure, it's very mainly like it's more like I think you yeah. can count the women on the one hand. like one hand. Yeah. But still, I felt like it was more complex. Like mm -hmm. it's about relationships among the people as well. So it's not just Frodo. Mm -hmm. It's like Sam is this big part. It's not just Aragorn, you know, all mm -hmm. these other things. So I still enjoy Lord of the Rings. And I think maybe if I would read this book when I was younger and didn't have these ideas shape me or hadn't been exposed to books written by women like yeah. fantasy books that I really love like in the last episode we talked about Zen Cho mm -hmm. and like you know where women are the center mm -hmm. I think I've just grown used to better <laughs> books like I'm sure this would speak to and has spoken to a lot of people mm -hmm. but I just think like in this day and age you can't make like I think there's just one woman I, oh. it's his love interest mm -hmm. I, maybe I'm being unfair and maybe there are other women but obviously not as they never stood out to you, obviously. No, they never... so it's her. And she is just, like, she's a plot device. She's mm. there 
to make him either sad or happy mm-hmm. or give him motivation or like you know he is the center of the thing and he's just such a boring annoying <laughs> character <laughs> keanu like the real keanu i'm sure is oh, lovely oh no we really love the real keanu. yeah but the the fake keanu mm-hmm. is it's just and like the whole book i think it's a series as well i'm like, just going to say it's on more books yeah i think it's oh. in fact i don't even know so it's not it won't even fit into your trilogy thing i think it's more oh. and i think he's working on writing another book but i might be just making this up i am just like he seems like a perfectly nice he must be a perfectly nice man patrick <laughs> <laughs> and he's obviously made a lot of people really happy but i just think that there's so many better books fantasy books out there that i don't want to spend more than 600 pages uh, reading about how perfect this man is at <laughs> everything he does and this woman that he's in love with that like oh sad story and then oh happy story or whatever happens in the end it just makes me so angry jenny it sounds as if there's no character development that there's no conflict within the character so for example in like gideon yeah and haro you know they're not bad people but yeah. stuff bad happens yeah. bad stuff happens and they have to cope with that yeah. um, like in harry potter he yeah. doesn't just go to hogwarts and know everything yeah. he has to learn and he's not good at some stuff yeah. Yeah. You know? and he's like an imperfect character uh-huh. yeah. like in this there is a bit of conflict from what i remember but all the conflict you know it seems like it's obviously it's been written for him but it seems like it's written to make him feel seem better mm-hmm. to make him seem like to not make him seem real and complex mm-hmm. but to make him seem oh look at how cool i am mm-hmm. look at how good i am look at how like i make mistakes but actually i learn from them and i'm actually a better person because you know i i don't like him already i yeah. just don't like him i mean uh, i'm very <laughs> clear, like, influencing your thing and like again like i said if you go to goodreads so what i did is i was so angry at this book i went on to goodreads and you can sort the reviews by so like you know whatever like there are four stars five stars whatever people love this book i was hate reading the ones <laughs> that hated this book the small minority so the one and the two star uh, people and like i So I'm the sort of person that who doesn't like dissing a book mm-hmm. in public which this is like I don't know how many people <laughs> listen to this but it's still a public space but because Patrick Rothfuss and the series is really established I'm not going to be hurting his sales no. or you know his library <laughs> borrowing and charges And see the thing is I might read that now yeah. just to see yeah if I think the same. Yeah. yeah um, you yeah. know how how I feel about the main mm-hmm. character. Um, Maybe you love it and you'll be like you don't know what you're talking about buddy. <laughs> Keanu is my favorite person in the whole wide world. But yeah. that's the thing I think um like for example Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. the hero of, of that for me is Sam. Mm, Sam is absolutely, absolutely. hero. Frodo's mm. just there and yeah. um, and Sam actually is a person yeah. that, you know. Yeah. I also love Faramir who yes. is like the side character who is you know like nobody takes seriously and like he's like his father hate, not does hate him but is like whatever but he is like you know yeah, sort of the yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and this book sounds as if it there's there's nothing like no. that I mean he has friends but they may as well again be like cheers yeah trees <laughs> <laughs> like they're all there to make him seem mm-hmm. this fancy fancy person and like i think I don't know that it's going to get better like I'm definitely not reading no, okay. any more books in this series <laughs> but I'd be interested to know like I know women as well like mm-hmm. there uh my partner's friend really loves this book mm-hmm. but again I'd be interested to know when she read this book mm-hmm. because you know sometimes when you read these kinds of books during your formative years like Harry Potter for mm-hmm. me um like I'm willing to see imperfections in it now for me in fact talking about the imperfections makes it more interesting mm-hmm. like I like yeah. talking about it mm-hmm. but it's played such a core part of my development like growing up that I can't like you know if someone would read it now mm-hmm. as a 20 or 30 year old whatever or 40 50 year old they might not they no, might think exactly. Harry Potter is rubbish exactly which I understand so like that's why I wonder that if she or people who are reading this actually like as a teenager mm-hmm. for example when you're still you know figuring out yourself your identity figuring out mm-hmm. and at that stage like even in my early 20s i think when i wasn't exposed to so much alternative kinds of narratives yeah. where women have the agency and they're not just women but yes like yeah. you know when women writers write from a certain perspective where they're not it's not just the men and the women are the accessories mm-hmm. yeah. but women are actually in front and like different kinds of women not just one kind yeah. of woman 
where in this she felt very much there i don't even remember her name <laughs> but she felt like she was there yeah okay so can i read the yes, yes like i've just like i read one line and it just annoyed me again so much okay <laughs> i have stolen princesses back from sleeping barrow kings i burned down the town of tribon i have spent the night with felurian and left with both my sanity and my life i was expelled from the university at a younger age than most people are allowed in i tread paths by moonlight that others fear to speak of during day i have talked to gods loved women and written songs that make the minstrels weep my name is kianu you may have heard of me we've not heard of you kianu and we don't really want to hear of you right like that so this wipe is throughout the book this arrogance is like oh, arrogance that's a perfect word yeah uh-huh. that whole blurb there mm-hmm. was just full of arrogance yeah and maybe maybe mm-hmm. to give them the benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. maybe that's what the author wanted yeah. maybe the author wanted a character maybe. that was so full of themselves yeah um and that maybe in book two there'll be a but that's what i thought you know i was like okay surely this can't be so predictable you know you can't have like this arrogant character who thinks he's all that and actually get all that <laughs> you know like all this like a lot of so he it starts off like from what i remember is that he's telling his story mm-hmm. or to somebody or to us i, I don't remember mm-hmm. but so all the stuff that he's bragging about has happened but i thought there would be you know like like that's the story everybody knows kind of and uh-huh. it is a little bit like that like the legends talk about this hero this man the myth the legend but i am you know this and it is that's a, a better story i would yeah. read that story <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like this is what actually happened but in this case it seems like the man the myth the legend is piano <laughs> yeah so it's just like all the stuff the behind the scenes that happens makes him more fantastic oh. rather than more imperfect and real and real exactly yeah exactly. so but i love I, ranting about this book but i would love to listen to yeah. you rant all day and mm-hmm. um, but that's what i love about books it's the fact that you might love something yeah. and somebody else might absolutely hate yeah. it. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. Absolutely. We just have different views. For sure. And like you were saying, like if, you know, you read Lord of the Rings, say, now, mm. it would be a different story to you absolutely. if you had read it 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, things like, as you say, Harry Potter, yeah. you know, anything like that, if you, you read them at a different age, mm-hmm. I know, for example, Jane Eyre. Yeah. A lot of people do that at school mm-hmm. and they see something different. I read it first as an adult. I didn't do it at school. And I took a lot of different things out of it yeah. than somebody else would that read it when they were younger. Absolutely. Um, Sometimes you're not ready for some books mm-hmm. as well. Like, yeah. I remember The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. It's like this really big book in India and the world, I think, because she won a Booker Prize for mm-hmm. it a couple of decades ago. And I read it in my early 20s first or thing late teens and i was like this is rubbish mm-hmm. i don't understand what this what the hype is and i don't read a lot of literary fiction anyway and it was a bit magical realism a bit whimsical like and i was like i don't get the big deal but then i read it again a few years later and it's one of my favorite books like i love it mm-hmm. uh because i think somebody i'd really sort of liked had sort of talked about it mm-hmm. or something like i'd heard about it that i thought i'd give it another chance this book is not that for me <laughs> it might be for someone else like i know i've said so much against it but i don't want to put people off obviously i want people to make their own choices Absolutely. and also i think it's interesting to have difference in opinion you know mm-hmm. like a book club for example i think my favorite kind of book club would be people are thinking differently about yeah. the same book Absolutely. you know Absolutely. like you get different perspectives based on your own life experiences your interests your priorities your mm-hmm. likes dislikes whatever exactly. and i think by talking about the things together you can create something new that's more interesting than what the book would be just by itself absolutely and that's what i love about our conversations um is that sometimes we will mm-hmm. show somebody something different in a book that they maybe never seen absolutely. and they would really think about it mm-hmm. and say i will probably read, get around to reading this yeah, book yeah yeah um, good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> but also like this is a safe space for absolutely. anybody who's listening who really wants to rant about a book that they thought like you know they're this tiny minority that everybody loves this book and like i just can't see the big deal please get in touch Absolutely. with us if you had high hopes <laughs> for this book and you want to talk to us like if you wanted to record yourself and <laughs> going on like me a rant about it 
we love to play or rant. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, or on the other hand, like with Jenny, a book that you had high hopes for and that surpassed your high Absolutely. hope. Absolutely. And if you wanted to record yourself as well, we'd love to have more voices. I think mm-hmm. yeah. that's. And if you had different opinions on Gideon the Ninth or the Name of the Wind or any of the books that we've talked about, we'd love to hear that yeah, too. Absolutely. Let us know. B would be very interested in it as well. Um, but she, she is shaking her leaves at us because we've went over time <laughs> um, so we're going to sign off and just let you know that our next challenge mm. is pop 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 <laughs> just pop just uh, pop so I'm interested to see what we're, we're going to come up with with that um, and we're going to have uh, an exciting guest with us next time yeah. so I'm really excited to have him with us Yeah. and it'll be li- like we're trying to have more voices as well on this podcast so we'd this voice is someone that we know, but we'd also love to hear voices that we don't. So yes, get in touch if you want to be featured on the podcast in any way. Thank you. Bye.